Hey, what's up, guys? It's Apollo Uchiya here, back with another part of what in the root of us in a political marriage. I just got back from that trip out of city, and quite frankly, I'm tired. And yeah, I thought, why not just record a video today? I mean, yeah, it's been a long time since I uploaded this series next part. So yeah, why not? Uh, I might upload a new series today as well. Uh, don't worry about the already continuing one like the Swordsman one and the Angel and the Iron Man one. I will upload them regularly, but um, I will take one day to rest guys because I'm literally so much tired my brain might not function properly. So as you guys know that those stories are unscripted ones so yeah. Please give me one day of time and I hope I can provide you with better version of that story. And as for this, yeah, I'm going to continue this and hopefully we will be able to finish this story and the story will soon reach its climax. If you haven't, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you like the content of this channel. And without further ado, let's continue our story. story. Oh yeah, guys, uh, I want to thank you guys for your support in the comments. I am going to tell you that everything was okay and yeah without further ado let's continue my story. Chapter 36 The Need for Information The Naruto clone gently laid May on the large bed. Her cheeks were still flushed and she seemed to be having quite the fever dream. The blonde Jinjuriki gently shook her shoulder causing her eyes to slowly open back to the land of the live. Naruto she said. He blushed and looked away suddenly interested in the mishappen drawer handle to his left yeah you passed out in the spring so i brought you here it's pretty hard to breathe in there and stuff Narta mumbled out the last part as he stood up to open the window and let cool air blow in the room may shivered and busied herself with getting the sheets over her still damp and nude body what she really needed right then was cool air to breathe and get all the mist out of her lungs she looked at Naruto. Their eyes met. Both of them blushed and glanced to the other side and away from the other person. May clutched at the sheets and covered herself. She hunched forward and hugged the sheets to her torso. Naruto took notice of this and sat at the foot of the bed. For some unknown noble reason, he was finding interest in all the inane details that the room had to offer. The pattern and swirls within the hardwood floor, the tiny micro fractures in the purple paint of the walls, the fact that the mirror was tilted over so slightly to the side, the scores of tubes of different makeup products on the top of multiple surfaces. So, uh, now to begin the conversation with the words of unsureness and nervousness. So, um, May, I don't... Naruto stopped and looked down again, a giant blush threatening to break out on his cheeks again. Though he pushed it down through sheer sense of manpower and will. He scratched his neck and snuck a look at the woman he had been laying with mere seconds prior. She remained in that hunched position, her liquid locked hair pushing forward and covering her eyes and facial expression for view. She looked so vulnerable, like someone who had been brought down to levels they were unaware existed. Someone who had been abused on a moral and emotional level. Naruto wanted desperately to say something, something cool and heroic and the thing that would make her smile and look up and give him a warm and friendly hug. But nothing came. The room was deafening into to silence. Then he heard something. Something that came so suddenly and so softly that he thought he mistook its very existence the first time he heard it. Then it happened a second time, the third time. Naruto completely turned his head to face May. Her head was still downcast, but very so often her head would rise and fall, ever so slightly in tune with those slowly small slounts. They were sniffles. She took a long, slow, shaky breath. It didn't take a rocket science to know that she was suffering in grief and guilt. Then she was on the edge of losing it and bawling like mad. Both he and she were naked. Though he didn't really notice, he was sort of used to it all at this point, being unabashedly bare in front of the people he cared about. Naruto crawled in 
his way to her side and tried to put an arm around her shoulder but was rebuffed. She shoved against him hard. It was so sudden and without warning that Naruto was unbalanced and fell into the floor. It was there that he stayed as May began to cry. He got up and tried again, this time more firmly. He wrapped an arm around her and brought her snug against his chest. The cool dampness from the hot spring water making a sharp contrast against the hot tears falling on his chest. Naruto made small shushing sounds into her ear and pressed a cheek against her temple, reminding her that he was near and there for her. Like all things eventually do, her crying began to end. In its last throes of existence, a dark torture laughter came from her lips. You must be thinking of me as so pathetic, she said, self-depreciatingly. To you, the person you see as, as your mother, just force herself on you. May leaned away from his face and body. Leave, she ordered. Naruto didn't. Her eyes darkened as she glared holes into his head. Leave. Forget what... We did what I said. Naruto didn't leave. He did not forget. May face went downcast. I don't love you. He said what you wanted to hear. You're my son and I could never love you like a husband. Now go. Naruto didn't want to hear that. He did not go. Hot tears began to spill over her eyes and face once more. Torturous, she began speaking in clipped, orderly toned snippets of words and dialogues. Please. Please. Please just go. Just leave me alone. Just forget and sleep. And when you wake up, greet me with good morning, mom. What's for breakfast? Just please. Please leave. Naruto refused her offer. I I love you, May. Naruto said slowly, stopping the tears from falling from her eyes. I loved you for a long time, like you were my mom. He wrapped an arm around her once more, though this time he snuggled into her chest. Yeah, it's weird. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I just had sex with a woman I respect as my mother. I'm not going to forget. I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to pretend. Because if I did, then I'd just admit that I am weak. I was weak. No, I am weak. May breathe hitched. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. May didn't answer. Back then, three years ago, when this whole thing started, you decided to give yourself up for an arranged marriage. The whole thing you knew was that you were going to be marrying the 13-year-old son of 4th Hokage. You, didn't, you did it for your people and the people of Kakegenkai everywhere. You also knew that he was already arranged and married with four other Konechi from different villages, Kuritasuchi, Digito, Fu, and Tamari. May remained silent as Naruto paused. You didn't really meet Kuritsuchi until the ball, though. You know when I lost my arm and Tamari lost her leg? May continued to stew in silence. See, the thing is, I was her boyfriend at that time. That was how you saw us. But when we first met, me and her, I just fucking hate her. May couldn't help it. Her body responded by taking a twitch in a sudden singular string of laughter. Oh yeah, I hated her so much she was abrasive, rude, disrespectful, pulled pranks on me, abrasive, loud, mean, abrasive, short-tempered, abrasive, oh, and did I men mention abrasive? A short series of chuckle emanated from her lips. But see, this weird thing happened. I spent time with her and learned about her and heard her laughter and I trained with her and I saw movies with her. And then this really, really strange thing happened to me. She confessed that she liked me. Isn't that weird? I hated her so much until that point. Then I suddenly found myself completely and utterly enthralled by her. I was in love. I couldn't help it. I couldn't identi identify what it was right away because I had never felt it before. What are you trying to say? May whispered. That you secretly hate me for what I did? Don't go throwing yourself in a pity party. It's unbecoming. What I'm trying to say is relationship can change. Sure, I would have liked it better if you stubbornly tried to wriggle yourself out of your role as my mother, but stubbornly was never your strong suit, was it? May didn't answer for the longest time. Instead, she thought long and hard about what she was about to say. I leveraged your emotions against you. I forced you to have sex with a person you thought as your mom. I raped you. I did something heinous and immoral. The only thing heinous and immoral is your line of thought. 
sure you might have forced yourself on it, but I'd be hard pressed to call something like that rape. You mean you're okay with fucking your mother? She asked darkly humorously. I mean, I'm willing to try and think of you as something else, maybe a girlfriend, a wife, a lover, or what do you want to, though? May wrapped her arms around Naruto and dragged him down into bed. She pressed her face against his, hot tears falling once more from her eyes. This time, though, she wasn't sad. She was happy. You know what? She asked with a humorous twitch into her voice. I actually asked her to switch Fu and Yujito about what turned you on a few days ago. You did? Yep, I did. I just sat down at the breakfast table and asked what I should try in bed with you because I thought you were just a hungry male specimen that would fuck anything with a working vagina. If that's not offensive, then I don't know what is. Oh shush. Then I talked to them and I heard their stories about you. I never actually considered myself your mom figure. It was news to me, actually. I called you mom on multiple occasions before that, you know. I thought you were just being smart because I was doing motherly things, but they weren't motherly things, you know. I was trying wifely things, making you meals, doing your laundry, justicizing you. Things that wife do. Things that wife do. I swear to God, if you do any more of my laundry, I'll do something drastic. Why? She whispered. Because I appreciate it when you do those things. But it's weird to hear that you were only doing those things because they were wifely. Sounds old fashioned. You're the kage of the village hidden in the mist, for God's sake. Have some dignity, Naruto said a humor tone in his voice. May chuckled a little bit. Some dignity, huh? But dignity is so boring. Having a silent dignity about you just leads to boring sex. Is that what it leads to? Absolutely. Well, isn't it just so good that you have none to speak of? It's just the best. Naruto snuggled into her and got ready for bed. Her eyes, though, were open wide in thought. Hey, Naruto, she whispered just before nodding off to sleep. Do you mean that? That you're not going to leave me? That you actually love me? May, there is one thing in this world capable of feeling more love for you than I feel right now. There is none. Except for me, that is. May accepted that answer and decided to fall asleep. Link break. The next morning. Somehow, don't ask how it just happened that way. But somehow, as Tamari walked to open the door to the mansion, she felt an impending sense of importance waiting behind that door. Until a few moments ago, it had been ringing at intervals of two seconds. Tamari heavily footfalls apparently were noticed by whoever was outside so the ring stopped once she was at the end of the hallway. Inexplicably, she could feel sweat begin to beat on her forehead and begin sliding door down her face. The land of water was always humid but the mansion made sure to keep itself regulated on the insides. She shouldn't be sweating yet she was. Her hand was shaking. She suppressed a shiver. She looked at the door in front of her. It was large, imposing, but that wasn't the thing that made her stop in front of it. Reach out for the door handle and pause. No. It was the person or the thing on the other side that was giving her troubles. Even on the mansion, from the inside, she could feel an aura of uncertainty, madness, and anger. Her pupil dilated, her breath hitched, her fingers twitched furiously. Slowly, she reached to the side of the door where she kept her battle fan and grasped it furiously. Whatever was outside was angry and strong and somehow knew of the barrier of seals that would Avis create that person the second they tried any sort of violence towards the mansion. Timari gulped. Why was she so frightened? Things had been normal until a few seconds ago. She backed up and placed her prosthetic behind her, ready it for an unfolding as soon as she opened the door. She thought about calling for help against the person outside but thought better of it. The outside wall had no sound seals when it when the insides once were active, a flaw in design. The person would hear her as soon as she tried and luckily resort to more brutal and effective methods. She didn't know. Whoever was outside might have an expert in sealing with them. They could be trying to coy attack knocking on the door just waltzing right in 
to attack her and Naruto and Mei and Kurtsuchi and Fu and Yujito. Nope, she wasn't going to let that happen. Behind her back, she unfolded her major fan and held it properly on her shoulder. Reaching a hard forward, she unlocked the door, unlocking both the mechanism and the deadly arrangement of invisible seals. In a practice display of frightening strength and power, she swung her hard forward and used her war fan to blast the door off of its hinges, splintering to pieces as soon as it struck to the person to the outside. Without letting any moment go to waste, she brought her prosthetic forward and blasted out cutting winds of hot air at the still standing individual who had yet to step indoors, then used her fans like a club and sent a debilitating downwards blow at the person. Tamari winced and froze, it felt like she strung iron and how light little give she got from the strikes. The dust settled, the sprinters fell, Tamari tried to move but her muscles were locked in fear at the massive killing intent directed at her. It was Snare of the Sanin behind the door, which relieved her for the fact that it wasn't the Karski who had come to attack, just the Kage coming to check up. Then she realized that Snare was covered in micro cuts, bruises and splinters. Her body was shrouded in a bluish greenish chakra shroud, probably the thing that displays the majority of the wind blasts. The war fan clattered to the ground and her prosthetic refolded back into her leg. Tamari lost her sport and fell to the ground devoid of the energy left to defy such an imposing presence. sama I can tell you how sorry I am for the attack. Tamari was halted mid-sentence as Tsunade brushed her way in and stumbled through the hallway, worried that she might have seriously hurt the Hokage mental f- facilities. She ran up to her and tried to get her to sit down and rest. That is until she realized a very important detail about the Hokage, the fact that she was shit-faced. Gets off me. Sonata drove out, stumbling over to the bar that was located in the living room and grabbed a random liquor off of the shelf. She uncrocked the bottle and using the mouth and took a swing. Sonata sighed in contentment and brought out a few short glasses. Where's Naruto? She asked as clear as she could. Busy, Tamari replied. Sonata sighed explosively and began massaging her temples with a lightened green chakra. She vacated the room for several moments to go to the bathroom and came back completely sober. Medical flushing, she explained. Thought it isn't usually used it with alcohol. Tamari leaned her back to the to look back down the hallway and out the door to the blinding whiteness of the rising sun. There were sprinters of wood strewn about the front lawn. Aren't you mad that I attacked you? Tamari asked slowly. It's not a wave of the assault with little concern. If I was mad at everyone that attacked me indiscriminately, there'd be a lot fewer people in the world. Now I ask you again. A little less drunk this time. Where's Naruto? Tamari did a sort of exaggerated sign and walked over to the wall that had strange black markings that went in swirled patterns. Do you really want to know? If he's training, then I can wait for him to come back. He's definitely physically predisposed at the moment. Tamari turned away from the recent sobered Hokage and tapped a few of the swirled patterns. Men bit her thumb and dropped the blood on a small square next to a piece of ceilings. All at once, the sound seals of the wall on all of the rooms dropped down. Moans and groans of carnal satisfaction premated the halls for a few seconds before Tamari could put up the seals once more. There was a small blush threatening to break out on Sonata's face. You could have just said he was with his wife, Sonata said. But then you would have asked me to go get him, and I'm not stepping in on any more of those engagements. They're into some really weird things, Tamari muttered the last bit under her breath. Do you want to tell me why one of the strongest people in all the elemental nations suddenly showed up at our doorstep with no word of warning and completely smashed beyond beliefs? Tamari uh, Sonata sighed and began twirling around the bottle of liquor by the lip. 
she was obviously mentally predisposed there are few things i need to talk to you about well they were supposed to be for naruto but i'm guessing you could relay the messages to my naughty need understanding first off sonata said pouring herself some more booze after naruto's little incident with sasuke there will be the decision to crack down on the more while lateral element within the elemental nations namely akatsuki and the uchiha brat to do that the village leaders are looking to conscript a samurai from the land of iron and begin a trip and strip search for every single country on this continent are you asking for our help no in fact i'm asking you to stay as far away from the main continent as you physically can actually it's probably better that naruto doesn't hear this particular tidbit of information you know how he can get sometimes better than anyone else tomorrow watched in slight fascination as sonade began once more to down glass of alcohol insanely fast why she was doing that just when she had medically flushed the alcohol out of her system tomorrow would never know smacking her lips at the taste of tequila sonade began on her second point second off chira seems to think that the leader of the brain so he's going there to check out things because he thinks that he might be having some connection with the okartsky it's going to be dangerous and it's going to hold a lot of risk is that why you're drinking so heavily part of the reason anyway jirai doesn't want the art of lost in the world so he wants naruto to disarm himself to the country of toads as quickly as he can to begin instructions send your so Sonata leaned back and rubbed her temples with annoyance expression. I don't know, the perv just said it had something to do with allowing nature to enter you and calm your chakra, becoming stronger, mentally more proficient and more powerful as a result, yada 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 and so on. Sounds like the perv just likes getting high in the woods, Tamari replied cheekily. I'd think the same thing if I hadn't actually seen it for myself, Sonata mumbled. Anyways, world's going to... Go on a man hunt. Jirai is going to rain to see the, if the leader, the Akatsuki, is there. Naruto needs to go to the land of giant toads. Other than that, Sonata looked into the distance of, with a slight conflict expression on her face. Well, I guess there's that. She said, barely audible. What is it? He has a cancer. The world's about to blow up. I'm pregnant. Honestly, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised by much. Do you want a divorce? Tamari paused. A surprised expression appeared on her face. What do you mean by that? Sonata poured out some of the sweet tequila into a cup of dishes. Then pushed one to Tamari. You're 18, right? Not quite drinkable age, but it's close enough. Tamari indeed took a small sip of liquid, but it buried her tongue and scratched her throat. She wasn't impartial to spicy food, but the taste allowed to her tongue was just so horrible to her. She didn't know how other people could choke this stuff down. Okay, I'm not going to drink, Tamari decided. Anyway, if we go get a divorce, aren't the villages going to start killing each other? Sonari shrugs. You know, three years ago, nobody thought this was going to work. Least of all me. It would have been written down as a violent if someone weird attempting to create lasting peace between the nations and everyone would have gone home with a few wounds to lick after all the dust settled. The mature woman paused to drink her booze. Then you guys went after the Uchiha brat and got your shit kicked in. Then the ball happened and two of you were permanently maimed. Then the training camp practically bursted into flames within the first two weeks of it being created. Honestly, I was ready to throw in the towel and cut my losses. Get my godsons out of there for God's sake. Why didn't that happen? The same reason there has to be sound seals on the house at this time. And over. Naruto had a special sort of presence about him. It just makes people want to follow him, listen to him, feel for him. I felt it firsthand when he practically let himself die for my sake. Anyway, relations between the nations couldn't be better. Interfighting is at all time low. Trade is five of the people are improving bit by bit. And best of all, paperwork is dwindling. There was a happy, melancholic smile on her face. Tamari looked dubiously at her. So, we're getting a divorce now. That's pretty fast. I'm not handing you your divorce papers on a silver platter like I did your marriage papers. If you aren't happy with him, then keep the word and you'll be back to being the heirs of Suno. But 
I don't get it. If things are going well for all the elemental leashes, then why are we splitting up? Or I guess why am I splitting up? It is for the exact reason why things are going well that we're having this conversation. I have given the option to all five of you. But seeing as the other four are predisposed of, it looks like you're the only one being given this option. The bottom line is, because everyone is so nice and friendly with each other, I doubt much a fuss would be raised about one of the harem members exiting because of the loveless marriage. That sounds simple. If that's how I phrased it, that's not how I meant it. I'm sure that quite a lot of animosity would be stirred up by this information but with everyone mobilizing at the moment and with eye sighting pointed to the bigger berries, I doubt there would be any blood spilt. The bottom line is this, if you're happier here than you would be out there, then you're free to stay. But if you want to exit and live a normal life, a happy life, then give the word. It's the least the Kage could do after screwing up your life so much already. Snarly slammed down the dish with a resounding clink. Anyways, she said, looking a little tipsy. I still need to get completely shit-faced and now that I have no more responsibility, Snarly paused to burp in her hand. I certainly have respons responsibility located at the bottom of several bottles of booze. Now if you'd excuse me, I think I know the way out. Tamari was left in an intense thinking pose at a bar with a dish of tequila out in front of her. She stayed like that for several seconds before clearing away the booze mess and start getting on her breakfast. Footsteps began to make themselves known throughout the house as the horny lovers finally untangled themselves from the morning embraces and made their way to the breakfast table in a mixed state of dress and mindset. One of the other, they came, they ate, they talked, they left. Tamari was left at the breakfast table alone for the second time in a few days. It was on the fifth minute of silent thinking it a very elegant and thoughtful pose that Tamari realized that she wasn't alone. Turning her head to the side, she was met with a presence that she really shouldn't have been surprised was there. Once he knew the that she acknowledged his presence, Naruto turned and gave her a smile. So you wanna talk? What do you want to talk about? Tamari asked a little bit shocked and confused at his ability to sense exactly what she wanted and needed at the time, especially at that particular point. It's not about what I want to talk about, it's what you need to talk about. Now come on, spit it out. Don't have to say in a high tone of voice. He was joking, she knew. He waited years for her to open up to him because that's just the sort of person he was. How do you know I want to talk? Naruto lazily pointed down the hall. I say the front door being made completely out of splinters and dust would be a good sign, or I guess I'm more clueless than I thought. He said with a goofy smile on his face. Tamari paused for a total of two seconds before relentingly to his smiling face. Naruto, I have to talk to you about something important, she said in a completely serious tone. He smiled when she began to look serious and completely ready for a serious question. Shoot, Tamari looked and took a deep breath. Snare walked in a few moments ago and told me some things. Something very important. Things that are very important and could affect your personal and our relationship life. Naruto began smiling again. Is that all? Link break. A way is way. A singular frog head popped out of the murky water and tested the air. It was rainy heavily and even though it was high noon it could have been mistaken for dusk it was really dark out most of the darkness came from the absolutely dense cloud cover the city made out of metal pipes metal rods and metal bones was impressive to just stare at so heavily industrialized it was and so heavily adapted to the rain that it looked like an alien for home world an arm brushed its way out of the mouth of the toad followed by another arm, then a head, a torso and legs. The man who popped out of the deceptively tiny toad was none other than Jiraiya of the Sanin, and he had his serious face on. Jiraiya looked up and down, diagonally and to the sides in every which way. The buildings were so tall and imposing that even his chakra sense were accurate. 
there might have been a workaround that would allow people to see him step out of the pawn toad. Seeing as he wasn't dead at the moment, he pulled his arm out of the rain smoke and allowed for the rain to pelt his palm and fingers. The water falling from the sky was supercharged with chakra. It had to be some sort of security system, a way of tagging unwanted visitors, though anyone with the calculation ability to actually keep track of that many people had to be insanely powerful. A god even. Trash shook his head to clear the mental fog and walked in search of the nearest inn or other such relentable, rentable places. He needed information and he was going to get that information even if it killed him to do it. As this is where I'm going to be leaving this part of guys. I hope you like this one and if you do please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you like the content of this channel. And this is Apollo Chiha and I'm signing out. Peace.